Hola chicos y muy buenas. Hoy quería seguir un poquito más con el tema de, de enviar nuestras fotografías a un profesional para que una, una empresa de profesionales para que eh, nos retoquen las fotos. Eh, antes de mostraros eh, la, la página web de la empresa que a mí me ha gustado, decidí hacer un, un pequeño estudio y, y preguntar a algunas personas eh, de opiniones. Entonces me puse en contacto con una persona que son fotógrafos con su marido y hemos tenido una conversación eh, por teléfono que, que la he grabado y os la quiero poner en este vídeo para, para que la escuchéis. Voy a poner subtítulos en castellano, por supuesto, porque ha sido en inglés. Y, y yo sinceramente creo que ha sido una conversación muy interesante. Pero antes de ir a la misma conversación, eh, bueno, el tema era exactamente este, de enviar nuestras fotografías para que una empresa las retoque. Pero antes de empezar con la conversación, en realidad os quiero mostrar... Eh, quién es con el que he hablado y, y el trabajo que están haciendo. Bueno, pues aquí tenemos la página web de Bob y Dawn Davis. Son una familia de fotógrafos. Eh, en este caso yo hablé por teléfono con la, con la mujer de Bob. Mm, son una familia, en realidad Bob, el, el marido, es el que hace las fotos, el que... Va a los eventos y, y dispara, mientras que su esposa Dawn, Dawn es la que se dedica al, al marketing y a la organización del trabajo. Y es con ella con la que realmente hablé. Pero para que sepáis quién es realmente, eh, quería enseñaros simplemente la página web que tienen ellos. Y de esta manera puedes dar un poquito más de significado a, a, a la conversación. Bueno, pues vamos a echar un vistacito a las galerías de las fotos que hacen. Esta gente son, eh, digamos, de la clase más alta de fotógrafos de bodas, concretamente. Eh, y por eso creo que la opinión que pueden tener es muy interesante, muy buena. Y nos pueden contar eh, cosas de, de mucho significado. Bueno, aquí tenemos la primera galería de, eh, de novios. Me va un poquito lento el internet porque ahora mismo estoy subiendo eh, un vídeo. Bueno, prácticamente veis las fotos. Un poco despacito, pero bueno. pues seguramente podéis apreciar la calidad del trabajo que están haciendo y la clase de fotógrafos que son, eh, muchísimo más alta que yo, como, como se había dicho en el vídeo anterior. Y por eso mismo, para mí, la opinión que pueden tener ellos sobre, eh, bueno, sobre todo en general es muy importante y de mucho valor, pero más que nada, hablando del producto final de, del trabajo que están haciendo, que es en realidad las fotos, al fin y al cabo, eh, pues entonces la opinión que pueden tener es mucho más importante para mí y por eso os quería eh, mostrar primero los eh, trabajos que tienen. Vamos a echar un vistacito a, a una galería más. Estas son las sesiones de, eh, de compromiso que hacen. Bueno, más que nada en lo que quiero que os fijéis son los colores de las fotografías. Bueno, lógicamente son unas fotografías eh, extremadamente buenas, pero eh, los colores son muy importantes para la conversación que vamos a tener. Los colores, el, el retoque en general, eh, es en lo que me quiero enfocar y quiero enfocar esta conversación. Vamos a ver dos o tres fotos más.
Bueno, yo creo que esto es suficiente para, para daros cuenta de lo, que, de lo que hacen, la manera de la que lo hacen y, y así. Pero más que nada, antes de empezar la conversación, os quiero decir que eh, tener lo, la oportunidad de, de hablar con, con eh, Dawn es algo muy grande y en realidad muchos me han preguntado de dónde aprendes las cosas que sabes, de dónde lo has aprendido todo. Todo en realidad lo he aprendido de gente de ese tipo, gente de ese tipo que se dedican también a enseñar fotografía, lo mismo que hago yo, lo que pasa es que a un nivel muchísimo más alto y con muchísima más gente, eh, no simplemente en YouTube, sino en, en, en eventos mucho más grandes y mucho mejor organizados. Y, y esta es la gente de la que yo aprendo, esta es la gente cuyos consejos son la base de todo lo que he hecho yo hasta ahora como negocio, como en cuanto a la fotografía, marketing y, y todo esto. Por lo cual, pues os quiero decir que tenéis una oportunidad increíble de escuchar esta conversación. Voy a poner subtítulos porque lógicamente hemos hablado en inglés y, y espero que realmente disfrutéis de esta conversación y que podáis aprender muchísimo porque las cosas que, que me ha dicho, en realidad esta conversación la idea era eh, darme su opinión, pero ya que estaba grabando la conversación para que no se me olviden cosas, luego le pregunté al final si le importa que, que use esta conversación, esta grabación en un vídeo, me dijo que no, por lo cual eh, he decidido poner casi la conversación entera pero no entera de todo porque era casi 40 minutos, pero una gran parte de la conversación la he puesto en este vídeo porque la verdad es que no hay manera de, de, de decir sus palabras con, con tanta exactitud y con tanta... no sé explicarlo tan bien como lo ha explicado ella, le he hecho preguntas, no simplemente las preguntas que tengo yo, sino más que nada preguntas que podéis tener vosotros sobre el tema de, de procesado profesional, de las fotografías y del marketing en general, Así que espero que disfrutéis. Adelante. My idea was just to share the reason why we use photographers edit and how we came about using them. Um, cool. Because I know a lot of times people are, photographers are afraid to give up mm -hmm. the post-processing because, um, one, um, the cost is, You know, it's an additional cost to the business. And two, they feel like they need to touch their images because they took their images. And um, and when we came to the realization, because I felt the same way. I didn't want to spend the money, nor did I want somebody else working on our images. Mm -hmm. um, but when I came to the realization of how amazing that company was for our business, um, I just wanted to share that so people would be inspired to at least give them a try or, or think about outsourcing you know, that work. Perfect. Well, I think you're going to answer some of my questions that I, I was thinking to ask you. So go ahead. So if you have particular questions, I'd be happy to answer them or I could just share it with you, um, you know, our situation. And it was just to do it because I, I love photographers at it. They've made a world of difference in our business. And mm -hmm. um, that, that's it. Well, I think that you... You won't answer my questions just uh, telling me your story, but basically I was thinking about, well, I'm showing people um, also how to use Lightroom and how to work with their images. So talking about outsourcing, uh, it may sound a little bit controversial. So, um, but well, it's not. Yeah, it's of not course, it's all. it's and not. People, it, people need to, people need to know how to use Lightroom and Aperture and that kind of stuff whether they outsource their images or not, because, um, well, you know, when you get your images back from, from photographers on it, they give it to you um, with a library from Aperture or Lightroom anyway. So if you want to go in and do additional work, you have that library. So you need to know how to use, to, you know, that, that program as well. Yeah, of course. And, and you so... know, we don't, we don't outsource every image. You know, we outsource our weddings, but we keep our engagement sessions and our portrait sessions in-house. Mm -hmm. You know, so we just outsource the hard work. We don't want to do, we only want to do what we love anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be spending hours behind the computer doing stuff that we don't need to do anymore. Because if we ever doubt what it takes, the time it takes to do that and what we pay, it's far, far less expensive for us to give it to somebody that knows what they're doing, that we trust, 
so that we can spend our time marketing ourselves and branding ourselves so that we can make a better name for ourselves in the industry because the client doesn't know the difference between a good picture and a great picture. Of course, of course. They just don't. Well, the thing is that there's something, there's a little difference because in your case, uh, you really need time to for marketing and um, actually spending time in front of the computer just editing your images is actually a loss for you you're losing money because you're losing time but in the case of uh, the people who are watching my videos they're not that busy but actually and i'm not too i mean um i'm just starting out and this is my second year officially mm -hmm. as a wedding photographer so i have a plenty of time but there's a thing actually i prefer to pay to, to edit my images because even if I'm gonna if I'm gonna earn less money actually in the future I'm gonna earn much more because my images uh, will go on a different level and it's just so 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 different and I, I know I have sometimes a um, hard time editing my my own images but people really love my images so imagine the, the hard time the hard time that they have about um, editing. I mean, they they really suck, and and they know it, and, and they're trying to improve their techniques, but but it just takes time and practice. So I'm I'm thinking about focusing a little bit the the, um, the subject on on this side, not uh, not exactly on saving time because uh, people the people who are watching my videos usually have plenty of time. What what they don't have is the the ability to to produce actually a great images so um, probably something that they're gonna think about is well if till now I was shooting and I was editing my images and even even if they're not so perfect they're just mine because I I choose those settings on my camera and then I choose each setting on, on Lightroom and this is my image so why outsourcing to photographers edit is um, is going to make my images better well I I will share you my opinion and then I would like to hear your side uh, because this is probably the most difficult thing to explain to them uh, so my idea is that just yeah I basically I told you I I don't mind spending time uh, with my images but actually what I most like is to have clients good clients and I'd, I want to have I, I want to make business I don't um, right. I like shooting and I don't want to um, slow down the process of, of um, growing my business just to be completely proud of myself because because those images are entirely mine well I don't mind if someone helps me but in, in this case my my business will will grow really fast and this is where I, I would like to focus focus the um, the conversation because actually who are you you and your husband you're amazing photographers you have amazing clients and this is really important well most of the people don't know about this they don't care but I care because I'm just starting and I've had some some really not cool situation because just because the clients are uh, of certain class and 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 they're not they're not giving me what I expect from from them they're not able even to appreciate my work so uh, of course um, we are trying to get to a higher class of of clients and you and your husband for example you're there people like uh, you people like Jasmine Star you're there you're working for really big clients and and good clients and I mean high quality clients and this is really important so tell me about that uh, tell me about the difference what can I what can I say to those people and uh, how how would you explain um, the same thing I I told you but do you do you share the same idea or you have some some different ideas just tell me something about it sure I totally get where you're coming from I mean Bob and I started where you started too you know, of course, <laughs> um, I, <laughs> we started with clients that didn't appreciate us as artists. It was more about, you know, what can they get for their money? Um, and exactly. we wanted, we desperately wanted out of working harder and not smarter. So we, we, we went on a track and, and, and said, we're going to work smarter, not harder. 
what are the things that we don't want to do? What are the things that we want to do? First of all, when it came to our business, we knew that we wanted to attract a client that appreciated us for who we are and as artists and didn't try to run our business or try to negotiate us down just so that we could meet the same photographer down the street and give, you know, and give them everything for nothing. So that was one of the biggest things that we did um, was working towards attracting the client that was meant for us, that appreciated us. Mm-hmm. And as we raised our prices, um, you know, it was harder and harder to do that. And one of the things that we needed to do was free up more time to market ourselves. You know, whether that be to market yourself or whether that be to educate yourself on becoming a better photographer, you do not want to be sitting behind the computer manipulating your images. You want to be in front of the camera or, you know, behind the camera learning your craft, making your craft better so that you don't have to manipulate them to make them look good. You want to be, you want to shoot it right in the camera. Mm -hmm. that there isn't a whole lot of work on the back end. The only way you can do that is to free up your time, and that is to get away from the computer, to get away from manipulating your images and spend more time practicing shooting, spend more time developing relationships in the industry and marketing yourself and making sure your brand is solid. If you don't have time because you're behind the computer editing all of your sessions or your weddings, you're not going to have time to focus on the things that are important. So when I say that we give, we give photographers edit our work so that we can market ourselves, that I meant me. I do all of the marketing and the branding and the relationship building in our company. And my husband is the shooter. And he is the one that spends all of his time educating himself, practicing, going out, shooting. He's shooting constantly. And we're not worrying about who's going to take care of these images because we know that we're in good hands with photographers at it. Mm-hmm. They come back to us. We use them. We're not sitting behind the computer saying, you know, I can't go out shooting today or I can't market or I can't call somebody or I can't develop a relationship with this person because I got to edit this wedding or this portrait session or whatever. The most important thing a photographer needs to do is learn how to run their business because you can be the best photographer in the world and you can be a starving artist because you don't know how to run your business. If yeah. you don't know how to run your business, you're never going to get it off the ground. You're never going to attract a client that appreciates you unless you start working towards that. Of course. Well, uh, actually, <clears throat> lately I'm I'm making more videos about, well, trying to inspire people and trying to to say, to tell them that actually it's uh, being a good photographer doesn't mean uh, just being a good I just you you have to learn how to market yourself and and how to sell yourself because you can be the best the greatest but but if you don't know how to show yourself or show your work to the world well uh, it doesn't matter i mean you're you're never going to get a client you you're never going to work right. for someone and it's just it's just going to be so, a hobby forever oh so if you take Jasmine Starr who i adore and she is also a friend of mine if you take her work She's a fantastic photographer, and she's perfect for California light. The majority of photographers in this world don't have that beautiful natural light to work with. They all need to learn how to use their off-camera flash because they're shooting in dark cathedrals or dark churches and dark reception areas. Not not all of our weddings are outside in beautiful light. Mm-hmm. You know, it works for her because she lives in California, and she shoots around the world as well. But if you notice what is best about her, it's her marketing. Of course. The girl can market herself. She has got, you know, 100,000 followers because she knows how to market herself. And that's what's driving her business, not her photography. Of course. Of course, I, I know that because I, I really follow her um, really close. And, and I'm, I'm actually I learned how to how to start my business and, and how to talk with clients, how to present myself, how to um, show my, my work. And and yeah, I, I really know that, but sometimes I have a, a hard time explaining that to, to people who, who are just starting out and they have dreams, uh, but sometimes it's difficult to explain um, the way they, they should go because exactly, yeah, they need time and they need uh, marketing. Uh, of course, there is different situation in each, not only in each country, but also in each city because uh, for example, I'm living in Spain, and I live in in really small town. Well, 
it's not that small but it's not a big city and people are really different if, if you go just like um, 100 mile, miles um, on south uh, people are completely different so uh, sometimes people have really hard time on, on working with with those people but they don't realize that they can they can work they, they don't need to to meet those people they, they just need to, uh, to make the best marketing online because mm -hmm. now we live on, on 21st century uh, but uh, how can you for example uh, if someone asks me uh, how could you show those images and and say that they're yours when they're actually edited by by someone else well I know this is a stupid question and I wouldn't ask mm -hmm. you but but it's just I think people would ask me and I can answer that but I think you can you can do it much better so I would really appreciate your help well, I, I I, I, I get that feeling, and it's not a stupid question, um, I, because I felt the same way. I said to Bob when he said he wanted to outsource because it would, begin, it would become over, too overwhelming for us, I said to him, how do we give our images to somebody? They're hiring us because of us. So mm -hmm. let me tell you this quick story. He said, I was just about, I was just at about a breakdown point where I couldn't handle the work and I was crying and too much to do. And um, he said, we're going to outsource our next event. And I said, at that point, because I, I had fought it, I didn't want to, that was my job. I did all of that. And he said, I don't care. You're too busy and I want my life back. So I said, fine, go ahead. He sent it off to some other company, not photographers at it, but a different company. And they contacted me and they said, okay, we've got your images. We want to know your style um, because we want to work with you and want to make this right. And I said, I don't have any time to devote to train you on what my style is. Here's my blog. Take a look at it. Mm -hmm. This is our style. So they said, okay, we'll move forward. And they said, they called me back about a week later and they said, okay, we've got all your images done. We want you to take a look at them first before we release them to you. And I said, I don't have time to look at them. Just put them on Pictage. And they said, are you sure? And I said, yeah, this is why we paid you to do this. I don't have time to train you. And they said, okay. And they put them up on Pictage. Pictage released them to my client. And I got an email from my client. And she was screaming at me with joy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I love my pictures. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. I can't <laughs> believe Bob captured. She was just going on and on and on. And I thought to myself, oh, my gosh, I didn't touch one of those pictures. And she loves every single one of them. Oh, my gosh. I can't. It was such a realization for me that I did not need to touch my images anymore. Yeah. But six months later, she. it was at a time when I used to let my clients design um, to take the pictures for their book. I don't mm -hmm. do that anymore. I just, I pick the pictures. But she came back to me about six months later and said, finally, I got the chance to pick my images. Here they are. I went to pick Taj because I hadn't even looked at the event yet. I haven't even looked at it yet. I was so busy. I didn't <laughs> care. She liked the pictures. I went to pick Taj and I went to pull the images that she picked and I was mortified. They had crushed the blacks. They blew out the highlights. They were just not at all what I would have done my images and that's when it realized it made me realize a client doesn't know the difference between a good picture and a great picture all they're looking at is the emotion that they feel in those pictures unless they're in the industry they don't know they of don't course. know what a good picture and a great picture is so that was a big aha moment for me like oh my gosh even though these pictures are horrible they love them so that's when i found photographers at it and i and they tone more truth to the image, which is how we do it. And I don't worry about whether they get it right or they get it wrong. I don't know that it does a really, really good job. And they, sure, would I do it differently? Absolutely. This doesn't matter. Because now the images are, are, are near perfect as far as I'm concerned. My clients don't know the difference. And if I want to take a few hand-selected images and put them on my blog, I might touch those. Mm -hmm. Because my time is so much more valuable building relationships with my existing clients so that they make sure that they refer me to their friends. They share me with their friends. I want them to be so happy with us that they, they tell all their friends about me. I don't want to have to go to them later and say, Hey, do, do you know anybody that's getting married? Do you mind referring me? <laughs> I tell them all along, 
all along from the minute I meet them, I want you to be happy with us because that's our goal, our goal, because you are our advertising. You share us with your friends, and that's what's most important to us. So you are, I, my goal is that you walk away from your experience with Bob and Don loving every single moment. And they, and, and I, ta- I say that throughout my whole process with them. If they say, hey, Dawn, do you mind if I change this picture for this picture in the book? And I say, absolutely. I want you to love us because you know my goal is that you're going to share us with your friends. So, of course, I want you to love us. I, I, you can make as many changes as you want. I don't care. Because, again, I outsource my book design now. I don't even do it. I have somebody in California, the modern album designs, they are amazing. Unlimited free changes to me, so it doesn't matter to me if my client makes one change or a hundred changes. I want them to be happy. If they're happy, they'll share us with their friends. And that's my marketing. That's my network. I don't advertise. Mine is all word of mouth, and it's all the, the relationships that we build with event planners. I wanted to reach the high-end bride because I knew that when they dug a lot of money out of their pocket and gave it to me, they weren't going to be micromanaging me. I knew that they were hiring us because they appreciated our skill and our artistry. Of course. I knew that they, I, I knew that they would not be saying, well, I need, you know, the photographer down the street is giving me three more books and you're not, you know? <laughs> um, and that, that was a big deal for me because I, I was at a point where the brides were, they were, expecting everything and they didn't care it wasn't about an experience with Bob and Don it was about what can I get for my money and I, I really wanted to work away from that I, I needed so badly to get away from that that I refocused our entire free time that we had on building relationships and marketing our business and making our brand solid so that when people came to us they they already knew who we were because they are all over our website. It's our adoption videos and videos about us and, you know, all kinds of content about Bob and I. I want them to feel like they know us so that they, when we meet with them, they already have a good idea of who we are. Because as Jasmine says, anybody can be a photographer. Yeah. You want them to love you. I want my clients to love me because even if we are the most expensive I want them to go back, and when they're when they're going, okay, we met with three photographers. I want them to say, "But I love Bob and Don." Yeah, of course. Because if they love us, they will spend a little bit more money. And I can't do that. I can't do that if I'm sitting behind Aperture or Lightroom, making sure all my images are exactly the way I want them to be. Bob cannot go out. And he Bob cannot go out and perfect his craft by sitting behind the computer. So that that's what I wanted to share with you. That's perfect. Well, I'm actually on the same situation. Um, for the last few months, I'm working on my marketing and it's going pretty well, step by step. Um, just sometimes people are, I mean, in this culture here, especially in Spain, well, they're trying to be more professional looking and maintaining this kind of professional style when well when they're mm, communicating with clients so this is not actually working i mean they're not presenting presenting them themselves as a person as a as a human being but but as a professional so usually it doesn't work that well as for example for you so this is something really new and different what i'm showing on my videos and because i'm also talking about communication with clients and workflow so i think you you really helped me helped me and i have one more question i don't know if 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 you can help me with that the only thing is some of my subscribers some some of the people who are watching my videos are starting with the weddings but most of them are not i mean most of them are just uh, shooting starting but shooting some session with with some friends or friend of friends and they're starting out like that do you think the photographer said it is a good choice because i don't know you you said something about the, the prices uh, a photographer said it but for me well i have a little bit different um, kind of thinking for me their price is just nothing i would prefer to shoot an entire wedding not earn even a, a cent but to get my images to the next level because if even if i if i don't earn even a cent i know that on the next year 
when when the next couples are going to see those images they're going to pay much more for those images and for for this kind of images so it's really important but do you think this can work for people who are just shooting some session with with a friend or something like that do you think this is a good way to work uh, to outsource your, your images because talking about prices is just 18 dollars for 50 images and 50 images it's more there more than enough for 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 a good session i mean i when i shoot a engagement session my my i'm trying to get between 20 and 40 images nothing more and right. Right. 18 dollars for this i mean it, it's nothing do you think this is a good idea mm -hmm. for for people like that oh yes of course i do because again um the more the more time you can be away from the computer the better um, you know, it, it, I can't really answer that for them. They have to answer that for themselves. Maybe. Yeah, of course. I know you're not in this in this part of the industry, but but it's just you're uh, a client of photographer said it, and 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 you have a better feel. I, I of definitely what... think it's worth it. If they are looking, if your friends or your subscribers are looking to develop a business in this industry, then they need to treat it like a business. And they, you know, even though a photographer is an artist. You have to become a business person. And if you want to succeed in this and you want to make a living doing what you love, then you have to treat it like a business and make business decisions. And that would be one of them that I would make, yes. Bueno, espero que os haya encantado la conversación tanto a vosotros como a mí, porque a mí la verdad es que me ha gustado muchísimo. Ha sido un, un placer para mí poder hablar con esta persona. Y si queréis ver sus fotos, pues están en Bob and downdavis.com eh, esa es la página web que tienen y la voy a poner también en la descripción del vídeo por si acaso eh, merece la pena ver estos trabajos porque yo personalmente cuando cuando empecé a dedicarme a la fotografía de bodas lo que hice no fue hacer lo que me parezca bien sino buscar ejemplos de los mejores o sea buscar el trabajo de los mejores y pensar en cómo puedo conseguir un trabajo, un resultado tan bueno como este. Eso es lo que hice yo. No lo he conseguido todavía, pero estoy cerca. Eh, así que si muchos os preguntáis cómo podéis mejorar, pues la, la, como habéis escuchado en la conversación, primero hay que alejarse un poquito del ordenador, hay que salir con la cámara y hay que pensar bien las cosas. Hay que hacer marketing, hay que entender un poquito más del marketing, movernos, hacer relaciones, eh, comunicar con la gente y pensar muy bien lo que estamos haciendo, no simplemente en el momento, sino lo que vamos a hacer en el futuro. Porque de esta manera nos podríamos evitar simplemente momentos difíciles. Vale, pues esto ha sido para hoy chicos. Espero que, que os haya encantado, de verdad. A mí me apasiona muchísimo. Me, me ha inspirado muchísimo esta conversación y espero que, que haya sido lo mismo para vosotros. ¿De acuerdo? Nos vemos en el siguiente video y hasta la próxima. Chao.